And now a Fox News exclusive. Shocking new details tonight about the condition of the U.S. Air Force tasked with defending your freedom every day. It is experiencing severe shortages in several key areas at a time of increasing budget strain. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin takes a look. It was built in the early 80s to drop nuclear bombs during the Cold War. Now the B-1 bomber is used for close air support in the fight against ISIS, a mission it was not designed for. You can put that thing over the battlefield 10, 12 hours at a time, uh, 50,000 pounds of weapon, and it can put a 2,000 pound weapon on a doorknob from 15 miles away in the dark of night, the worst weather. But only half of these supersonic bombers can actually fly. We only have 20 aircraft assigned on station currently. Out of those 20, only nine are flyable. The first jet I worked on 20 years ago had 1,000 flight hours on. Now we're looking at some of the airplanes out here that are pushing over 10,000 flight hours. It's not only the personnel that are tired, it's the aircraft that are tired as well. Master Sergeant Bruce Frommer has overseen maintenance on the B-1 for 20 years. The jet's breaking more today than it did 20 years ago. After nonstop deployments to the Middle East, these airmen are also tired. When you deploy over and over again and you're worked as hard as you have to be worked to get these things in the air and get our training done, uh, these airmen are starting to get burnt out. So people are tired. They're exhausted. And instead of flying, pilots are having to do more administrative jobs, once taken care of by civilians who were let go. In 10 years, we cut our flying hour program in half. Captain Elizabeth Jarding, call sign Knuckles, is a B-1 pilot who just returned in January from bombing ISIS. Honestly, from a perspective of an air crew member, yeah. the squadron's wiped out. Like, we love to do combat. We, we love to deploy, but we don't have enough resources at home to support the demands. Then there is the shortage of parts. They have to cannibalize out-of-service planes from what is known as the Boneyard, a graveyard in the Arizona desert for jets that no longer fly. Like their counterparts in the Marine Corps, they even cannibalize museum aircraft. This is actually one of the jets we pulled this part off of. Uh, we also pulled it off of six other museum jets uh, throughout the U.S. So this piece here came from somewhere in here. And what does it do? Uh, just tells you which direction your, your wheels are going as you're taxiing the aircraft or landing or taking off. Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota is home to the B-1. When we arrived, three bombers were slated for a training mission. Only one could get airborne on time. The B-1 has set records in Iraq and Syria, dropping more than 9,000 bombs. It recently returned home for badly needed maintenance, replaced in combat by the oldest aircraft in the Air Force inventory, the B-52. Immediately, the number of bombs being dropped on ISIS fell to an eight-month low. Fox News recently documented how budget cuts and increased combat missions were breaking Marine Corps aviation. A spokesman for the Defense Secretary was asked whether the problem went beyond the Marines. No, I don't think so. But a Fox News investigation into the Air Force suggests otherwise. The problem is much broader than what the Pentagon would like to admit. These KC-135 mid-air refueling tankers keep warplanes airborne in the fight against ISIS. Boeing stopped making this plane in 1962. Captain Frank Gillard deployed within hours of the first bombs being dropped in Libya in 2011. He was one of the pilots who refueled those bombers. So when you have these budget issues, and you essentially cut the water off for a little bit, that stagnates our training, which immediately impacts our ability to react. And the problems are just as bad for this F-16 squadron. Here at Shaw Air Force Base, home to the 20th Fighter Wing, there are 79 F-16s, but only 42% of them can actually deploy. That's because they too are missing parts. This chief master sergeant has spent 27 years in the Air Force and just returned from Iraq. Our first aircraft downrange this deployment, we were short 41 parts. What did you do? Well, at, at, at that point, we had three separate aircraft that we were taking parts from. That's an expensive way to supply your planes, isn't it? From a financial perspective, yes, ma'am, it is. But from a man hour perspective, it's, uh, it's very uh, labor inducive. When his F-16 squadron deployed to the Middle East, it brought an extra jet to cannibalize. It's extremely inefficient. You burn a lot of hours doing that. It's very uh, stressful on the force. Forcing many to leave. I don't see my family ever. Um, my kids don't really see me unless it's Saturday and Sunday. I'm tired of working second shift and never seeing any 
never being able to do anything. What also has commanders worried is while these pilots focus on ISIS, which doesn't have an air force, they aren't training enough to take on conventional threats from countries like Russia or China. Then I'll be candid here and tell you that if you were to take uh, in the next four or five years this fleet of F-16s against a contested airspace, uh, we'll take losses. When I was uh, young coming into the Air Force in the early 90s, uh, we used to make fun of foreign air forces for, the, for flying at such a low rate, and we're slowly but surely walking ourselves into the same problem. At Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina, Jennifer Griffin, Fox News.